رمضان بحياتي شمع على مماتي يا ربي دعاتي تقبلها عطول رمضان ندى رحمة من ربنا النام بيحل حياتي Assalamu alaikum and welcome to Zamzam and Timur broadcasting live on ITV Networks Day 26. The theme aptly, the night of power, our quest to find the night of Laylatul Qadr. We still have two uneven nights tonight, which would be the 27th and possibly also the 29th night. How has your search been going in as far as uncovering and finding that night of Laylatul Qadr is concerned? Remember, 83 years of accepted worship, that is the bare minimum. The Almighty's treasures is so vast and His blessings are so magnanimous that I think 83 is just for us to put it into perspective, the average lifespan, etc. A thousand months, absolutely amazing. So what an opportunity we have tonight. We have another opportunity. I'd, I'd, I'd probably say um, with respect, we have an opportunity tonight. Then we have an opportunity tomorrow night, although it's not an uneven night, but it's still a night in Ramadan because thick and fast our guest is busy departing our guest is busy leaving in the next three to four days and it should fill us with this deep sense of sadness anxiety but if we've been spending our time constructively it should produce us with this renewed faith and we should be regenerated inshallah going forward so we're not going to talk about Eid yet we still have a couple of days left let's look at uh, iftar time across the country seven minutes after five in Durban 527 in Johannesburg Cape Town 548 we're crossing to the uh, El Dorado Park mass iftar this evening uh, shortly after quarter past five and then we go to Masjid Noor in Cape Town in the mother city we have a look at what iftar is like in Cape Town uh, pledge guests also coming up now and uh, uh, in a bit and then also the Q&A with Molina Vanker relating to us using two toothpaste in the month of Ramadan. In fact, that question has been asked more than once. So my name is MJ Lee. Wonderful to be in your company. We live across 347 in South Africa, African continent, and also streaming worldwide. On Facebook Live as well, use the hashtag Uniting Hearts. In studio, it was at the start, 10-day period last week, and now we're heading towards the final lap. The head of Sharia Banking, Standard Bank, Mohammed Amin Hassan. Assalamu alaikum, Mohammed. Assalamu alaikum, Mohammed. Assalamu alaikum, MJ, and to all the viewers. Let's just pause for a yeah. moment. It's, it's come to that where we've reached the end. Inshallah, we'll have a bit of time to talk uh, about the night of Laylatul Qadr, the night of power, and uh, how you've, alhamdulillah, managed to conclude Taraweeh a couple of days ago, alhamdulillah. alhamdulillah. Very, very fortunate, very envious, but, you know, envious in a positive way. Um, we know that is allowed uh, yes, in, yes. in Islam, it is. But I think before we talk about the night of power and we speak to our pledge line case a bit later, we haven't heard anything about the products and services of Standard Bank. Standard Bank uh, being a title sponsor of Zamzam and Timur, a wonderful support that we've received from you over the last month, alhamdulillah. Yeah. It was the case last year as well. Let's talk a bit about the products available, particularly in terms of your Sharia banking. Thanks, MJ. We sincerely appreciate it. And alhamdulillah, we've been fortunate to partner with Zamzam and Timur over the past two to three years now. Mm. And as a business, we've been growing over this time. And Alhamdulillah, our products and services has started to increase as well. So we can cater for the most elementary of savings in fixed deposit uh, products available for both business as well as personal customers to the most sophisticated of uh, transactions required for our institutional or corporates or big clients. Mm. So we've got fixed deposits. Uh, we've got call accounts for our businesses. We've got a really, really unique product in our diners product. Mm. We've got an endowment product, which again is a term investment, which is a very tax efficient product. We've got our wills and fiduciary services. So we can do your Sharia trusts, your estate planning, your wills. For our extremely wealthy and high net worth individuals, we've got bespoke portfolio management. Mm. And for our institutional clients, we've got money market instruments and hedging products, such as our foreign exchange uh, product that hedges out your currency risk. Mm. We've now very recently just launched our first lending product, which is our commercial property finance product that's going live now, alhamdulillah. And inshallah, in the pipeline, there's some stuff that will be coming through as well. Okay, so let, let's talk about this, the, the diners card. We've heard a lot about it in the media. Yeah. Uh, it is a world first. What makes it so unique? Uh, and the fact that it is a world first, because that in itself speaks volumes. 
So from a diner's uh, perspective, it's the first Sharia compliant diner's product in the world. So diner's is one of the international and global card carriers. Mm. You've got MasterCard, you've got Visa, Diners, which is part of the Discover brand, mm. and there's one or two others. Diners launched the first Sharia compliant product, and Standard Bank owns the Diners brand and the distribution rights for the Southern African and African piece. So Alhamdulillah, they've given us the permission to launch. We went through to them and said to them, you know what, we've got an idea. We believe there's a very unique offering that's required. Our clients have been asking us to fulfill a very specific demand. Mm. They want a card that gives them the flexibility and all the features and benefits of what you get on your conventional credit card. Your lounge access, your travel benefits, mm. your bespoke uh, entertainment benefits, your lifestyle benefits, and fulfilling short-term cash flow needs in a Sharia compliant way. Mm. So we've structured it on what is known as a charge card construct. Mm. Uh, which is recognized by the National Credit Act. And Alhamdulillah, this gave rise to the first Sharia compliant charge card in South Africa mm. and the first Sharia compliant diners product in the world. Alhamdulillah. In terms of uh, saving and investments, what is currently available to our viewers? So you've got four savings and investment products available. For our personal and business clients, you've got a fixed deposit, which means you can put in a fixed amount of money from any term from 30 days up to five years and funds will be available upon maturity or if you need your funds before maturity, you are, uh, you're able to access it uh, upon request as well. For our business clients who want to park away surplus cash and want to have that cash available for them on demand, we've got a Sharia call account. So that manages their liquidity, it manages the cash flow, you're generating a return on your surplus cash in your business. For our longer term investors, and those investors that want to have a tax efficient investment, our endowment product is really unique. It's the first Sharia compliant tax wrapped endowment in South Africa, where you have an effective tax rate of just 1% per annum. So you go in, those of us that are on the higher tax brackets, you can now put in your funds, the return that you get on those funds are taxed at only 1% per annum. Mm. And that's really, really great if you have any tax rate higher than, uh, than 1%. Mm. So you're saving on the tax piece and it's a really nifty estate planning tool because investments in there are not taxed by estate duty. So you can utilize it as a really cool uh, and really tax efficient uh, product, both from your income tax perspective as well as an estate duty perspective. Mm. And the last investment product we've got is for that sophisticated investor that wants to have a little bit of more exotic instruments. He wants to play around with equities. He wants to play around offshore. Mm. He wants to have foreign currency exposure. We can design a portfolio according to what your risk appetite is, and we will manage that portfolio accordingly for you. Then just two things. Uh, as we conclude, maybe we go to ads in the pipeline in terms of development going forward, yeah. and then perhaps our viewers that have not had experience with Sharia banking, how would we prompt them to say, hang on, um, Standard Bank offers Sharia banking, give it a go, try it out if you mm. haven't. What do we say to our viewers? Absolutely. So in the pipeline lookout, within the next six months, we've got at least four new products that are coming out. And that would cater for the lending side, as well as some of the transactional capabilities that our clients and viewers have been asking us for. So look out for that. I, I don't want to divulge too much right now, okay. but there certainly would be uh, three or four new products that would be landing within the next six months, uh, inshallah. In terms of uh, our clients who want to experience Sharia banking at Standard Bank, my first and foremost uh, message to everyone is, I think Islamic financial services across the globe has been growing rapidly. Mm. And Alhamdulillah, within the South African context, we've been fortunate to uh, allow for the execution of Sharia compliant financial services and products. As Muslims, it is incumbent on us to eradicate riba and interest mm. from our lives. So first and foremost, we need to make that niya at any one of our financial services providers to get out of riba. That must be our first intention. From a standard bank perspective, what differentiates us as a brand, I think we are the largest bank in Africa by assets. We are a 156 year old organization. We've got the largest and most strongest balance sheet in South Africa. And now you're bringing in all the tech, all the balance sheet strength, all the brand equity of this massive organization that spans 23 countries. And you're now iterating that into Sharia compliance. So 
if there's a brand that we would certainly uh, stand by, it would be the Standbank brand. And we'd ask uh, our clients and non-clients, please experience it with us and give it a go, inshallah. Give us our support. And as much as we gain support, we would be able to give back to the community, inshallah, and support endeavors in the community, inshallah. All right. So as Mohammed Amin Hassan is saying, giving back to the community over the last couple of years, Standard Bank has been a major partner with Zamzam and Timur and ITV Networks, ensuring over the last couple of years that we were able to have these conversations with you every single day going live at quarter past four across the country. Now that is a strategic partnership and it allowed us to share all the experiences of Muslims in South Africa with you during the course of the month of Ramadan. So perhaps if you uh, haven't given it a go yet, give them a call and uh, find out what Sharia banking is like at Standard Bank. Ads are up next. Remember, um, we live on Facebook as well. So over the last couple of days, we've had nice comments actually coming through. Uh, many viewers just dropping in an emoji with the hashtag Uniting Hearts, which is cool. You know, we understand perhaps you don't want to speak that much. The emoji at times is uh, enough. So continue also to keep us company. Spread the word. Uh, send us your comments. Let us know what has it's been like for you. 21st, 23rd, 25th, 27th night, which would be tonight, the night of power. We're going to be talking about that in a bit. We're also catching up with Madina Institute. We're catching up with Darul Ulum Pretoria and Islamia College down in Cape Town. Cape Town, well, yesterday we saw over five and a half thousand people gather in the Burkab area for this mass iftar or buka, as it is referred to in uh, the mother city. El Dorado Park, while we're going there, um, they've got their mass iftar also scheduled for this evening. So lots to look forward to. Stay tuned. شمع لمماتي رمضان بحياتي شمع لمماتي Day 26 of the auspicious month of Ramadan is going to come to pass very, very shortly. We may be anxious, we may be nervous, we may be a tad sad, and that is to be understood. This blessed guest is busy packing his bags, metaphorically speaking, and will be leaving. Have we given this month its due right? Have we spent enough time uh, with the month spiritually? Have we connected with this guest? Because that will allow us then to attain that Allah consciousness. Before we introduce our pledge line guests, let's go to our first group of students, Madina Institute in Cape Town, for their nasiha. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I'm your brother Iskander, Ramadan Mubarak. Ramadan Kareem, to all of our brothers and sisters in the Ummah, to our aunties and uncles, to the youngsters, to the elders, to all of Allah's creation. Now Ramadan, what's the root word of Ramadan? It comes from the root letters Ra, Mim, Dad, which mean to burn up. So this Ramadan, I want you to think of Ramadan as a burning, playing with fire so to speak. Ramadan is a time in which we literally burn our nafs. The nafs is the human ego. It is that sticky part of ourselves which there is a lower part and a higher part. The lower part has characteristics and qualities which are not good. Things like selfishness, greed, uh, forgetting Allah, forgetting to be a person of justice and mercy. The higher self is a self of compassion, of love, of charity, of giving to others and remembering Allah constantly. This Ramadan, through the pains of your fasting, which in many ways is a literal burning, you feel a burn in your stomach when you're fasting. This burning is a reminder that you are burning a negative part of yourself. You're burning a part of yourself that needs to be improved. 
so that by inshallah, the end of the month, we don't want you to completely burn yourself because you need to get to Eid and enjoy some, some, some tasty sweets, some biryani and akni and all of the lovely things that come with surviving this fire. Uh, so dear believers, please dance with the fire, but don't burn yourself. Make the most of it and answer the calling to your higher nafs. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. All right, so that final messages and advices we're getting from our students at Medina Institute in Cape Town as we, let's put it this way, at the back end of the month of Ramadan, those last few days. A pledge taking place tomorrow morning, uh, day one health supported by Al-Qaf SA, hashtag share the care. So tune in tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. up until 2, two guests uh, in studio, Dr. Zahir Qadr, as well as Brother Shiraz Ghani from Okafi. Say, Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Um, Brother Shiraz, can I start with Dr. Zahir? Sure. Um, seeing that it's day one a health, a very <laughs> a unique concept, a concept that seeks to look after our muadzins, our uh, ulama, uh, those workers that work in the masajid, even our caretakers. Talk to us about this concept, a very interesting one. Well, the vision of day one health started. Uh, with the founder, Richard Blackman, uh, my partner, who's our CEO. And his vision was to create a medical care and cover that would be affordable by one and all. Hmm. And the vision of Day One Health is to be able to have accessible health care and get uh, the nation covered. Most people cannot afford a medical aid. We've got 45 to 50 million people in this country who are uncovered and only have access to public health care. When I joined Day One Health, I told him about the plight of uh, poor Muslims as well. And Richard embraced it and says, uh, when would be the right time to come up with a solution? And I think during the time of Ramadan is the best op opportunity for us uh, mm. to gift the people who take care of our deen, the muazzin who calls us to prayer, the imam who leads us in prayer, the apa who teaches our children about deen. What better gift can we give them at the end of Ramadan as an Eid present? than the best medical cover at the best possible price. Mm. We find a lot of uh, even professionals and families, they tend to grapple with uh, medical aid, perhaps their companies not offering or used to offer before, and or, or if they are offering, it's only uh, a percentage, a portion, and then the employee would have to then contribute towards the balance. Um, but a medical aid fund that accommodates for our learned scholars, that accommodates for our mu'adhin, uh, the caretaker, their family members, etc. It's perhaps been, with respect, it's maybe been uh, an area that was neglected uh, yes. previously. And I think that accentuates the reason why our Muslims in South Africa and across the African continent should be supporting this. Sure. Uh, we've had the honor and privilege of being embraced by Okaf, uh, Shiraz, uh, Harun Kala and Zain Kaji have come together with us and we've designed a package that basically gives our best possible primary health cover as well as hospital cover, which is life and medical clinic hospitals throughout the country for uh, the muazzins and the imams and the apas and other Islamic workers who uh, the viewers can choose to pledge and take care of. Hmm. And we've created a product that for 700 rands gives them the best possible care that we can give at Day One Health. Hmm. Uh, so for a year, for 8,400 rand, you basically gifting a person uh, with medical cover that would normally under medical aid cost four to five times that amount of money. Hmm. Now, Brother Shiraz, let's talk about partnership and we, we're looking at this hashtag, share the care. Uh, OCOF uh, involved extensively across the country and the African continent worldwide. In fact, the need for OCOF SA uh, to have then supported this project just from OCOF's perspective. OCOF is a, a community endowment fund. So it belongs to everyone. And what OCAF always tries to do is tries to create social co cohesion and collaboration between civil society and NGOs and service providers across the board. Uh, we have seen the need for our imams and muazzins who are the light, the illumination of our masajids. They are like the souls of the masajids hmm. for them to be taken care of. There are many times when we ask them for advices, but we do not care or do not show the care of how they feel. Mm. And in the quiet, they have many expenses and medical 
uh, attention that is required and they suffer in silence. So we have said that the center of influence for the Muslim society is the community center, mm. which is incorporated with a madrasa and a masajid. Mm. So the people that, that bring that to life, we need to take care of them. So we need to consider what they are being paid and the affordability of medical aids. So one of the things is to bring to the attention of the trustees of the community centers and masajids that they should take care of the imams and, and the muazin so that in the event of a illness, they are well taken care of rather than having to go to a public hospital mm. and, and suffer without having much attention given to them promptly. Therefore, on doing a due diligence on the product of uh, day, K, uh, day one, we, we realized that this is a suitable product without too much of frills, but giving adequate cover for an imam, a muazzin, an apa, an Islamic social worker, rather than having nothing at all. Mm. And it, it, it is at a reasonable price. And even to add on the family members, it is, a, it is at a very negligible amount. Mm. If you have a happy imam, a happy muazzin, mm. the call to prayer would be even better. Mm. And at least we're having that social responsibility of taking care of our leadership mm. of, in our community in that, at that center of influence. Mm. So from an OCAF perspective, we believe that uh, we need to have endowment funds mm. to take care of our imams and muazzin on a continuous basis. So we're promoting with the masjids to take out an endowment fund, mm. capitalize it once off, and let the income of that pay the installments of that medical aid, medical cover on an ongoing basis. Mm. And we are also, part of our, our theme is to create active citizenship. Mm. And uh, one of them is uh, a program of communities in motion. Get active. Don't leave it to your management committees of your masjids and your trustees to do things. Take a participating role. Ask them what they require. Mm. If you see that the, the masajid wants to provide the service for the imams and muazzins, but do not have the financing available, sponsor it. Mm. Get involved. So we, we, are, we are doing a lot of that where we are, we are now calling communities to say, take care of the dawa workers the apas, mm. the muazzins, the imams, whoever is doing good work, even if you find a family member of yours mm. as well. Mm. Um, we, we've discussed this. We have, we have opened it up to say, whoever cannot afford expensive health care, introduce this to them or even gift it to them for a year. Mm. Let them have the comfort of having some medical care for themselves. Share the care. Mm. That speaks of the, of the hashtag, literally, share, share the key. Now, Dr. Zahir, let's talk to our viewers. We want to encourage them to tune into the pledge line tomorrow morning at, at 10 a.m. on ITV Networks. But just in terms of economics and, and finances, what are we looking at here? Well, for 700 Rand, you basically are going to be covering what uh, an imam or one person, uh, primary health care, which is unlimited GP visits, blood tests, x-rays, basic dental care, uh, Optician. as well as opticians as well, mm. uh, after 12 months of premium. We're also going to be giving them hospitalization, so critical illness as well as dreaded disease. So if they have a heart attack, they are covered. Mm. If they meet in an accident, they are covered. Uh, this benefit extends to their loved ones. So for another 300 rand a month, you cover for 1,000 rand uh, a muazzin or imam his wife and two children, and they get the benefit of having the best hospital cover. So if Allah forbid they should meet in an accident, mm. that family is covered up to a value of uh, 500,000 rand per incident. Uh, and this gives them dignity. It gives them that peace of mind. Mm. And what a gift. They, uh, if you ask any, anyone, do you know the name of your muazzin? Do you know the name of your mm. imam? How Good many question. of us can say that? I'm actually thinking now <laughs> by muazzin at my masjid in Goodwood in Cape Town. So also, also, one more thing is, it's not only related to your masajid. Mm. Islam is growing. In, in, in the rural areas, in the indigenous community, 
Islam is growing and, it, and they will be the leaders in terms of growing the numbers of Muslims in this country. Mm. We also have foreigners in this country. Mm. Islam is at the forefront. It is important for us as Muslims to also consider them as well. Mm. So we are, if we are able to sponsor even a Imam or a Muazzin in another town, mm. they cannot afford it. We should be doing that. Exactly. Uh, the, the scheme where the, the Imam cannot afford it or the Muazzin cannot afford it, we can even use zakah to help them for that. Mm -hmm. where, where we want to gift it to uh, our Imams and they are unreasonable but not enough to pay for it, we can use Layla to gift it for them. Mm -hmm. If we don't want the responsibility of it in the future, yeah. while we have the capability today mm -hmm. with our youth and good health ourselves, we can create a wakaf, a hundred thousand rand wakaf at an 8.4% return can cover 8,400 rand on a yearly basis. Mm. So we can do that. If we have loved ones that have passed on, our, our parents, our grandparents, that we forget to make dua for them on an ongoing basis. Mm. It's good for us to have Satka Jariya, mm. give Satka Jariya in their name, ongoing charity. Mm. We, we set up a wakaf at Okaf for them and uh, it'll continuously pay an imam at any masjid uh, that requires it on an ongoing basis. Fantastic. All another, the best, uh, doctor. Just another important in point. Is, yes. In, in, in conclusion, uh, Brother Shira has hinted at a good point. More than half of our uh, imams and muazzins are foreigners. Mm. And day one health is specially created for those people. So, so long as you have some form of identification and proof of residence, all of those people are covered. Mm. So that's an important thing to remember. Uh, Dr. Zahir, uh, Brother Shiraz Ghani, Jazakallah so much. All the best with the uh, pledge line tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. No, Jazakallah khair. Thank you for uh, having us. I just want to conclude with one part. It is important that whoever sees the benefit in this and advises other people to look into it and participate into it, they will also get the reward for passing beneficial knowledge. Perpetual. Perpetual. Absolutely. Perpetual. All right. So tune in tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. for Day One Health. Hashtag share the care supported by Okaf SA. Get the family members, the friends, communities, your neighbors, the congregation. Get them all the tune in. In fact, rally the masajid across the country because here is specifically a product in a portfolio meant for our ulama and all those religious workers that perhaps have been neglected. They also have a right over us. Ads up next. شمع على مماتي رمضان بحياتي شمع على مماتي 26 days in to the month of Ramadan, focusing on the theme today on Zamzam and Timur, broadcasting live on ITV Networks, the night of power. We have another uneven night tonight. We've been searching 21st, 23rd, 25th, 27th night, another night, possibly also the 29th night, which in... Uh, yeah, all probability, definitely, it's going to be on uh, Monday. Now, there's a pledge taking place uh, tonight as well on ITV Networks at 9 p.m. Ali Glass Academia Library. Last year, we had Dr. Elias Parker uh, on the show ahead of the pledge line, and that was last year. We now have uh, Treasurer of Ali Glass, uh, Anwar Abdurrahman, and a committee member also from Ali Glass Academia, uh, Saleh Salam. Assalamu alaikum, gentlemen. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Looks like you got dressed in jackets, like you've, you've come with the cold of Cape Town. We, we came to brace the cold of Johannesburg. You think it's worse here? Does it feel a bit worse? Mm. It's a bit colder in Cape Town at the moment, eh? Yeah. <laughs> it is, absolutely, it is. Absolutely, absolutely. Are we going to be embraced by Joburg's warmth, inshallah? Alhamdulillah, inshallah. inshallah. You're definitely going to receive that warmth tonight. Inshallah. I think we'll talk about that in a couple of minutes. I think before we, we get stuck into the pledge line taking place tonight, uh, maybe just smooth over um, Anwar establishment of the Academia Library, the pivotal role that it plays not just for the community in Cape Town, but for South Africa. 
Yes, so the Al Ikhlas Academia Library is a branch of the Islamic Library that's been um, s originally set up about 30 years ago within Cape Town. Mm. And it's renowned at that time over the, the, the many years that it has served the community with several um, groundbreaking um, forums for discussions, debates, um, the access to resources such as Islamic literature, um, even a resource to some of the reverts to Islam. Mm. Um, with, with that in aim, we established the Academia Library, which is a much more state-of-the-art facility mm. uh, housed within the Islamia complex, uh, which has got about a thousand Muslim students, both junior as well as high school. And the area is surrounded by about 70 madaris and another 32 uh, schools within the immediate vicinity. Mm. Um, we are targeting for this library to actually access the broader community and uh, we've gone on a drive to make this library open to all for free. Mm. Uh, we've had many um, youth coming from the townships from Umfaleni mm. and Alhamdulillah even some good stories to share with you uh, whereby some have embraced Islam mm. uh, through that journey where we've had a Quran uh, stories for kids. Mm. That was uh, that's hosted every Saturday at the library. Um, other than that, our urg urgent need is really for um, reading material. Mm. The library can hold about fifty thousand titles. Mm. Lest we say we are currently at about um, ten thousand mm. of those titles. Uh, Alhamdulillah, through the last two years of pledges and support from the viewers, we actually enhanced the uh, the, the collection significantly. And hopefully tonight we will see that warmth and uh, people generously um, assisting us in our pledge. And donating, inshallah, inshallah, definitely the viewers will be making a personal investment because we're not helping NGOs and organizations. It's about us actually making our investment for the Akhirah. No better time to do that if we consider we're in the final stretch of the auspicious month of Ramadan. And tonight could also be uh, the night of power, Lelatul Qadr. I mean, then we are really going to be striking Big time. Uh, Saleh, what about the, the importance of us preserving uh, history and knowledge? Uh, Ali Hlas, the Academia Library, is playing a pivotal role uh, in that respect and also provides the online portal as well because Dr. Ilya spoke to us about that uh, last year. And me being from Cape Town, I'm pretty much you know, aware of uh, Ali Hlas, the Academia. But um, we've seen over a period of time where libraries and, and institutions were kind of like shelved and we're using that metaphorically. Uh, and now there's been this re-emergence for us to preserve the institution of libraries. And what Anwar is saying, that the library, specifically Ali Khlas, can accommodate for 50,000 titles. You're up to 10,000. We can still accommodate 40,000 uh, more. That speaks to the volume of knowledge that we can preserve for all other institutions. Absolutely. And if you look at the, if you look at the library, and in fact, um, just Muslim communities and um, yeah, Muslim communities in general across, across the world, wherever they've been, one of the first things they were established, of course, would be the masjid. But tied to that was mm. the deep legacy of knowledge and books. Mm. So we are also, of course, in the month of the Quran, mm. the month of Iqra. Mm. And books and the establishment of knowledge is absolutely central and pivotal to the Islamic message. And if you look at the purpose of um, the Academia Library, this is really what it is trying to serve. In addition to that, it's really also created a almost like a third space, if you will, hmm. whereby perhaps topics uh, that don't typically get discussed necessarily in masjids can be discussed uh, in, in a forum such as the Academia Library in a, for, in a way that's open completely to the public. Hmm. Um, and if you also look at the location of the, of the of the library, it's really kind of like in a in a in an area that's not that's perhaps let's call it traditionally Muslim, but also one that is open entirely to the to the to the Muslim community. I mean, to to other communities. Mm. Now, yes, we only at like 10,000 10, books strong. We'd like to get up to fifty thousand. Mm. Yes, um, we need we desperately need uh, the communities to dig deep into their pockets to to help us fill that, that gap of, of 40,000. Mm. Um, tonight, obviously, is one of the most opportune moments to mm. try and seize that opportunity and to invest, put a brick, uh, in a sense, 
uh, mm. into 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 your into your akhira mm. by investing in some of the great tafsirs that are that, that are there, mm. some of the great collections on uh, the various commentaries on the hadiths and so on. We would like to be able to purchase those books so that all the madaris that Anwar has, has spoken about, all the up and coming uh, alims and so on, can actually access uh, this institutional repository of knowledge for the benefit of all. Hmm. So just quickly, um, I know we've got about 40 seconds. Let's quickly just remind our viewers about the value of us tuning in tonight to ITV Networks for the Al Ikhlas Academia Library Pledge Line Live uh, tonight. We want to encourage them to not just tune in, but to make a contribution. 10,000 titles, we still need 40,000 more titles. We need the support of the entire country, inshallah. Yeah, yeah, most certainly. So my pledge to you or plea to you is please tune in uh, this evening. We want your support. We need your support. We urgently need your support. It is one of the odd nights uh, within the month of Ramadan, which is sadly leaving us shortly. It could be the night of Qadr. And as Salih has, has basically reminded us, that lay that brick for your, your, your future in the Akhirah, inshallah. All right, so all the best uh, tonight with the uh, uh, pledge, inshallah. I'm sure the viewers are going to uh, dig deep into their pockets. Uh, they're going to open up their hearts and minds, open up the bank balances also, importantly. <laughs> get communities, get family members, get everyone uh, to tune in tonight. 10,000 titles, we can push it up to 50,000, inshallah. Amen. Inshallah. Amen. So uh, that is uh, Anwar Abdurrahman Trejra at Al Ikhlas Academia Library, also committee member of the institution uh, Salih Salam. Tonight at 9 p.m. tune in to ITV uh, Networks. It's about you making your personal investment in the Akhira. As it has been uh, mentioned, particularly at the start of Zamzam and Timur, tonight could be the night of power. Tonight could be the night of Laylatul Qadr, an uneven night. Think about that investment. 83 years minimum of accepted ibadah and worship. So what if you contribute tonight and you multiply that? Uh, I think you ultimately will be set uh, for a very, very long period of time because that indeed is a lifetime. Ramadan Q&A with Malina Vanka makes reference to toothpaste in the month of Ramadan. Is it allowed or not? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Respected viewers, another very interesting question is that whilst a person is fasting, you interact with clients, can you use toothpaste whilst fasting? The principle is very, very clear that if the taste goes down the throat, then this would break your fast. This would break your fast if the taste of the toothpaste goes down the throat, then this would break the fast. Our advice is that use miswak. This is a great sunnah of the Nabi of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And not the scented miswak, but the normal miswak. Utilize that during, uh, during the fasting period. And this is permissible. And this would bring, uh, uh, this would revive the great sunnah of the Nabi of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So we should refrain from using, you know, there is that possibility that the taste of toothpaste will go down the throat. So refrain and abstain from that, inshallah. If the taste goes down the throat, this would break the fast. Allah grant us the understanding till we speak to you tomorrow. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. All right, so that is uh, Malina Vanka with Ramadan QA. It's a question that has been asked for uh, a while now, in as far as uh, toothpaste is concerned. Are we allowed to use it in the month of Ramadan? or not early in the morning obviously it's a given that it's got to be done but i think reference is made to after suhoor time and that would then make reference to us then actually fasting is it going to break the fast or not let's have uh, a look at where we stand now at the moment uh, iftar time uh, seven minutes after five for durban that time rapidly uh, drawing close Johannesburg 527, Cape Town 548. We're crossing to Eldorado Park in Johannesburg with a massive town uh, in a bit. And then also Masjid Noor in Cape Town in the mother city where apparently it's quite cold, but the hearts are warm. Adds up next.
All right, so we're back from the break. Our viewers in Durban have already um, broken their fast. It's, uh, in Cape Town, we would say it's bukka because now it's like you've, you're opening your iftar. So we pray that our viewers in Durban, you've had a spiritually uplifting day. Today's day 26. Tonight is an odd night, 27th. It could be the night of Laylatul Qadr. Please do not forget us in your dua, uh, the country, Muslims. Uh, in the country, the African continent, and I think humanity at large, because we continue to live in challenging times. Still in conversation with uh, Mohammed Amin, of the head of Sharia Banking, Standard Bank. Mohammed, night of power, night of Laylatul Qadr, 27th night. Although many ulama would argue that we shouldn't just focus on the 27th night. Yes. But then again, to standardize it, so to speak, heightens awareness around it. Otherwise, the, mo the month and that night would just pass by mm. and no serious effort uh, would be made. Alhamdulillah, you're half with the Quran. You've been leading uh, Taraweeh Salat throughout the month of Ramadan. You've been doing it for a number of years. Uh, you were in a fortunate position where you completed the Hatham mm. uh, of Quran. I'm sure that was just an amazing, amazing. emotional mm. uh, experience. But tonight the masajid will be packed. Yeah. We know the masajid will be packed around the country yes. um, in honor of Laylatul Qadr. It is an uneven night. Mm. Laylatul Qadr will also be on Monday, which is the yes. 29th night. But let's talk about the, the real power mm. of this night because it's specifically mentioned in the Quran. A night that is mentioned in mm. the Quran, it has to speak of some volume and weight that it carries. Absolutely. And you know, MJ, we're speaking about this particular night in the Quran. We seek explanation of what makes this night powerful from the Quran and for me there's two verses uh, or series of verses that stand out the first is when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about Laylatul Qadr he says inna anzalnahu fi Laylatul Qadr that he revealed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the Quran in this night of Laylatul Qadr and it is by virtue of the Quran then that Laylatul Qadr derives its power hmm. so how great must the Quran be and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then tells us, لَوْ أَنزَلْنَا هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ عَلَىٰ جَبَلْ لَرَأَيْتَهُ خَاشِعًا مُتَصَدِّعًا مِّنْ خَشْيَةِ اللَّهِ That had this Qur'an been revealed on a mountain, you would have seen that mountain crumble into pieces out of khushu and fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hmm. So that you were speaking about when we complete the Qur'an and we make the khatam of the Qur'an in Taraweeh. You know, MJ, as an individual personally, you actually feel that weight. You feel that power of the Qur'an where your, your legs actually start to feel weak and you realize, man, these are the actual words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hmm. He said it to Jibreel Amin alayhi salam and Jibreel Amin alayhi salam came and said it to Nabi sallallahu alayhi salam. And imagine, Nabi sallallahu alayhi salam, the greatest in the entire creation, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made him as uswatun hasana, the perfect hmm. being and the perfect character. He himself physically used to say to Bibi Khadija radiallahu ta'ala anha, Zammilu ni, zam, cover me, cover me. He used to feel that pressure of wahi upon him. This is the weight of the Qur'an and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chooses the fortunate few for that to rest in the heart. So this night of Laylatul Qadr, as you rightfully mentioned, it could be any one of the odd nights. Hmm. But we must, we must remember and find that way of finding our way back to the Qur'an. Hmm. Uh, it's something that's very dear to me personally, perhaps because I'm a Hafiz mm. and Quran is dear to me. But this night of power is by virtue of the Quran and we must try and get our lives back to the Quran. Mm. There's so much in the Quran that we just must, we've reduced it to just this book we read in Ramadan. Mm. And that also we just read it in Arabic, mm. which there is barakah in. Don't, there is a massive amount of barakah there. Mm. But have we read the meaning? Mm. Have we understood its meaning? Have we implemented its subtleties in our lives, the simple nuances, how do you speak to people, how you address your neighbors, how you engage with your parents, how you engage with your children, your mm. spouses, all of these things we feel as though 
it's not in the Quran. And the Quran is just these stories of past prophets. No, mm. there's so much beauty in the Quran and how it can shape our character, inshallah. So I think on that spiritually uplifting uh, moment, inshallah. subhanallah, our uh, team standing by El Dorado Park, we're going to now connect to them and have a look at the mass iftar as our viewers and ourselves, we will see what it's like in El Dorado. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to ITV where we are coming live right from El Dorado Park at the uh, uh, El Domain School where Massive Thar is taking place. Alhamdulillah. I hope that you are enjoying the day. It's a 27th night of Ramadan. Alhamdulillah. As you can see, all people are sitting and they are ready to enjoy themselves. Alhamdulillah. Before we go anywhere, we have a very young girl there that will say something to us. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Isa Morris. I'm here for Massive Star. I, I wish everyone a, a happy Eid Mubarak. Jazakallah. That was beautiful, Alhamdulillah. Not only her, we have, we have some people that actually initiated this whole thing. You know, the beauty is they are not Muslim and they respect Islam, Alhamdulillah. Both are the principals of the schools, Alhamdulillah. So I think we're going to call you, and Alhamdulillah. And you will give us your name, your surname. You take over the mic for me. I'll take it over when you are done. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum My name is uh, Ashley Pinar. I am the principal of this El Domain uh, High School. I am accompanied with the other principal. The C. Uh, I'd like her to introduce her. Can you introduce uh, yourself? I'm Olabeyo, principal of Willow Crescent Secondary School. Inshallah. And then also working with. Uh, the other principal of the El Rado Park Muslim School. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Faisal Saleh. I'm from. I'm the principal of the El Rado Park Muslim School. Mashallah. You can tell us exactly what made you and all the principals get together to initiate this. And probably this is just the first time you are doing it. Yes, you are correct. It is the first time we are doing it. But also, uh, a lot of the ideas came from Nuclear Westbury's side and we wanted to do it on a massive scale yeah. because our community of El Dorado Park currently, we are bleeding. Yeah. And, and, and tolerance levels need to be brought together. We need to bring people together. Yeah. We need people to understand and, 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 and debunk a lot of myths about the various faiths there yeah. is. That we are here, that we have grown up and also we'd like to show the world yeah. something very important because all across the world, Christians, Muslims, they fight each other. Yeah. Whereas in our communities, we grew up together and there is no fight. And we want to take this message out to the world. The message of love, the message of tolerance, yeah. all in, in the name of the Almighty, of course. As correct. Alhamdulillah. As you say, that this program goes worldwide. We go worldwide, not only in South Africa. We go right up to America, right up to Britain. And you name the countries we are there. I think this will be a, a, a good day, gesture. And in future, I think we can work together. I don't think El Dorado Park has problem with Muslims and Christians. What I can say to you is, El Dorado Park don't have a problem with Muslims and Christians. Yeah. If I may just give it to you a quick, in a quick, short way. There is not a single family in El Dorado Park yeah. that, that do not have Muslims in their family. Yeah. There is not a single Muslim family in El Dorado Park that do not have Christians in their family. Uh, that's true. That is who we are. And, 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 and this morning I was just clearly saying, oh, I miss the days when we used to walk around with barakat. Now we don't do that. We, don't, we need to bring that back. And that is one of the reasons why with, with this, uh, my sister schools, we are all next to each other. We serve the same community. That is why we said we got to do something. And as schools, we, are not, we must stop taking. We also need to give. Yeah. It's not about giving education alone. It's about giving part of us, our time, our love our tolerance. Thank you, man. That's very well put, inshallah. And we will now speak to the principal of Willow Crescent. And they are, they can give a, again, you can just give us your name and, and what uh, actually what interests you in doing a massive tar like this? 
Um, I'm Olivia Hill. Um, I realize that my children need to work together. They need to have respect one another. It's about humanity. We've started last year with a program where we wanted to make El Dorado Park great again. You can only make El Dorado Park great again if people have respect for one another. Yeah, alhamdulillah. And as you said, you know, our president said, we will make America great again. And we will make El Dorado Park great again, alhamdulillah. Mr. Saleh is also here. He can add some of his words, inshallah. Inshallah, assalamu alaikum. I think if you look at what we're trying to achieve here, is a spirit of, uh, of, of uh, tolerance. How do we accept and how do we actually participate? And as Islam teaches us that we need to lead by example. So as an example here, we're showing our people out here that we are prepared to serve and we're at the same time prepared to extend ourselves for the pleasure of Allah Ta'ala. We all, we, all we ask is that every single person out there in the world that they make dua, that Allah grants us the ability to, uh, to create this muhabbat, this unity of peace and acceptance and tolerance, inshallah. Amen. Yeah, and uh, alhamdulillah, Fiona is also with us. Fiona has done about three mass iftars. Is that, uh, is that so? Am I speaking the truth? You have done mass, uh, mass iftar, alhamdulillah. Maybe uh, what made you actually jump aboard and say, this is what I want to do? Uh, well, we thought there was a need in the unprivileged community, and then we just thought uh, we want to go out there and make a difference, and we have been doing so for the past eight years. Yeah. No, alhamdulillah. I say, like, uh, uh, where do we want to take this from here? And uh, that's the most important question. Where do we want to take this from here? Each one of us can speak for about a few seconds. Where do we want to take it from here? Okay, we've already decided that. This is an <laughs> annual event. Uh, collectively, we decided that from the day one, when we planned this thing, we said, this is it. We're, uh, we're just growing. This is the start. Yeah. And we are looking forward that by next year, we, uh, El Raro Park is a community of 400,000 people. Yeah. That's our target. Yeah. And that is where we're going to end. Yeah. We're going to 400,000 next year. That's what we are setting up. Are you also willing to go for 400,000 which takes so much of strength? Most definitely. We started off three schools. Next year we will have all 34 schools in El Dorado Park involved. And thanks, man. I mean, um, it's very much, you know, very good to see SA Muslims and non-Muslims work together. Yes. yes, we can work together. We can make the world a better place. We can make the world a better place. Now, us fighting and bickering one another, you know, uh, I hold myself, I hold Christian people at the very high esteem because I have some families from mine who are Christians, who are priests, and I, I honor them and I respect them. And this has taken me now to another level that really we can work together. Absolutely. It's about bringing together the community, you know, as a whole. So it's not only about religion, it's about everybody, the human race. She, I hope you support your wife, you know? 100%. I'm right here all the time. You're right here oh. and you're everywhere. everywhere. Yeah, now I'm Sheikh, you know, and this is very beautiful. We're going to move around because what we're going to get, we're going to get the visuals to ITV so they can actually see what's happening in El Dorado Park. We have been mean to, to many areas, you know. Actually, tonight I'm so busy in the morning. I was on TV for two hours and now I'm here. And from here, I'm moving into Benoni. I'll be in Benoni from about half past nine till about half past eleven, presenting in Benoni. Now, Alhamdulillah. And what, uh, what's your name? Shiam. Shiam, what are you doing here? I'm coming for the massive iftar. You came for the massive iftar. Were you fasting the month of Ramadan? G. Did you keep all your fast? G. You never ate behind the table? No. <laughs> Jazakallah. Jazakallah. I say, we are coming live from El Dorado Park. Alhamdulillah, we have the Imam. You want to say something to us? Is one second or a few seconds. Do you want to say something? Not really. I'm just enjoying the uh, commotions and the unity among the people. As you can look around, you will find there are Muslims and non-Muslims here. None. And everybody is not worried about who you are, what you are. They are just enjoying the company that is there. MashaAllah, JazakAllah. We are enjoying being here in El Dorado Park. There's young, there's old, there's middle-aged. Now, Alhamdulillah, the Alpha is talking your own story here. Alhamdulillah, how is Ramadan with you? Alhamdulillah, Buddha. Are you enjoying Ramadan? Ji, Buddha. I, I, I'm not going to ask you how many fast you kept because I know you kept all. You don't like to eat under the table. Yes, I don't like it under the table, but I can't fast because I'm using Smarties. I've got high blood. Oh, you use Smarties? Mm. Yeah, the sister's using Smarties, Alhamdulillah. We're right in El Dorado Park. We are coming alive to you. And this is ITV, Alhamdulillah. This is ITV. 
and we are not getting the f uh, proper visuals now. Alhamdulillah, we will go back on the light. Alhamdulillah, as I say that, ITV goes worldwide. ITV goes worldwide. Alhamdulillah, uh, we have been to all the masjids, and right around the country, we have been to masjid. We have been to Durban. We have been to Cape Town. Salaamu alaikum, sister. Alaykum salam. What were you saying, sister? Alhamdulillah. You enjoying the day? Yes, yes. So you also here for iftar? Yes, ma'am. What's your name? Hamida. Hamida from where? From Yadra Arupak. Alhamdulillah. Sister Hamida, you're now live in the world, inshallah. I think the world knows you. Alhamdulillah. Yes, yeah, salaamu alaikum. Salaamu alaikum, sister. How are you? Alhamdulillah. And you? Alhamdulillah. Are you enjoying the iftar for today? Yes, I am. We all are shukran. Can you give us your name because we don't know what's your name? My name is Faiza Sali. I love and attention to. Naam, Jazakallah. Alhamdulillah. As I say that, we are moving all over the world. We are moving all over the. Assalamu alaikum, my sister. I love your smile. Wa alaikum assalam. What's your name? Kashifa. Who? You are Kashifa. Yes, I am. Have you been fasting the month of Ramadan? Yes, I am. I hope you have kept all your fast. I know many people that eat behind the desk and they say they are fasting. I know that you are not like that, isn't it? No, I'm not like that. <laughs> no, nah, alhamdulillah. As you say, we're enjoying ourselves in El Dorado Park. Well, I, I think this is, thus far, is my best iftar. We have been everywhere. Durban, Cape Town, this is our best iftar. Assalamu alaikum, brother. You also smiling? <laughs> Assalamu alaikum. <laughs> Wa alaikum salam. How are you, brother? What's your name? Uh, Lukman. Lukman from where? Yaldorado Park. From Yaldorado Park, Alhamdulillah. So, are you also fasting? Ji. Alhamdulillah. Uh, from what age were you fasting? From seven years old. Hey, from seven. The brother's fasting from seven years old. He beat me. I started fasting when I was an adult. Alhamdulillah. We have uh, children here also who are attending. We can't talk to them. They, they cannot understand us. Alhamdulillah. I say we are enjoying ourselves in Yaldorado Park. And I hope that you are enjoying yourself. Alhamdulillah, we are coming live. We are right live in Eldorado Park, Alhamdulillah. Then we have another two minutes before we break our fast. We have another two minutes before we break our fast. And Alhamdulillah, let's enjoy the fast. What's your name, sister? Nurhan. Who's that? Nurhan. Nurhan from where? From Lanesia. How old are you? Eight. Are you fasting? Yes. MashaAllah, how many fast have you kept? A lot. A lot. MashaAllah. She kept a lot. She can't even count how much is a lot. Alhamdulillah. But she kept a lot of fun. Alhamdulillah. We have just one minute remain before we go into iftar. We had one minute remaining. One minute remaining. We have a sister with a beautiful tracksuit. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum salam. How are you? Well and you. Alhamdulillah. Are you, are you enjoying it today? I'm very happy to be here today. Yeah. Your name is? My name is Sharis Pretorius. I am a journalist from Aldous FM. Yeah, very good. I have, I have done so a few programs on your radio. I'm Maulana Dawood, if you know me. I know yeah, you. <laughs> I hope that you're enjoying it now. As I say, we are coming very much alive. This is ITV. It's time for Azan. We can all break our fast, inshallah. We can all break our fast so we can just get the visual. Okay, I think uh, first up, I mean, before we talk about those beautiful visuals in Eldorado Park, let's break a fast. Shukran, Allah. Allah, 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 Allah. So iftar time has uh, arrived for our viewers in Johannesburg. I think just a minute that we have, moment before we go to ads, these scenes in Eldorado Park, the fact that this mass iftar was arranged by two principals of the area who are not Muslim. Amazing. And they are speaking about social cohesion, mm. they're talking about integration, they don't even really have family members mm. that are Muslim. They're seeing the need for bringing communities together, subhanAllah. subhanAllah. And they are actually feeding them literally, based on what we've mm. seen, hundreds and hundreds of Muslims at iftar time. Absolutely. That is so beautiful. 
So beautiful. And you know, we spoke about it earlier on, MG. I think as Muslims in South Africa, we see some of our brothers and sisters in other countries that are really suffering mm. and do not have the ability to practice their religion freely and are always condemned and looked down upon because they are Muslim. And we're really, really grateful as Muslims in South Africa that we have not only the ability to practice our religion freely, but our non-Muslim brothers and sisters also willing to join in in the celebrations of Ramadan as well. Alhamdulillah, so beautiful. It is absolutely beautiful. We came from the mass buka, mm. a street buka in yeah. the Buka up yesterday to the mass iftar in uh, El Dorado Park. It's just amazing. I mean, we've, I've even seen images uh, being circulated and uh, shared on social media where Muslims and non-Muslims have actually had iftar in Trafalgar Square yeah. in England. That is just beautiful. It is absolutely beautiful. And it shows also, you know, when Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam taught us how to give da'wah. He, it was, Islam was never spread by the sword. Mm. Islam defended itself by the sword, yes, but it never spread Islam by the sword. Islam was always spread by the character of human beings, mm. by the character of the Muslims, the loving nature, the caring nature, the welcoming nature of the Muslims. And that is how Islam spread. And Alhamdulillah, it's my personal view is, if you survey the landscape of the world today, and all of these in inverted commas, terrorist events that have always been branded as being a Muslim terrorist attack. Mm. The downstream impact of that has always been non-Muslims actually taking an active interest in what Islam is. Yes. And our Muslim brothers, Alhamdulillah, and sisters across the world have always come up to the podium, welcomed everybody in, and you see these beautiful images of Muslims and non-Muslims sharing platforms together, alhamdulillah. That is beautiful. With the sad uh, attacks at the Masajid mm. in New Zealand, we saw Sonny Bill Williams stepping up to yeah. the plate because he was saddened by this. Yes. And he rallied the Muslim community with mm. all the leaders. They came together. And some of the spin-offs uh, of that was uh, three all-black rugby players actually accepted yes. Islam yeah. and two Wallaby rugby players yes. also accepting Islam. So that is just amazing. Absolutely amazing. When we think that something is going to work uh, in an adverse effect against Islam. The power of the Almighty is so sublime, it actually then turns out to be the opposite. So if our time is taken in Johannesburg, we're waiting on Cape Town. We'll be crossing there shortly. Stay tuned. All right, day 26. Uh, iftar has been uh, concluded for our Durban view. Seven minutes after five, 527 uh, in Johannesburg. My goodness, let me just say this again. Those scenes in El Dorado Park at the Mass Iftar, may the Almighty bless those two principles. Um, the second principal's name unfortunately evaded me, the, the female, uh, but the first principal, Mr. Ashley Pinar, may the Almighty really bless you. You are not Muslim. You're understanding the concept of social cohesion because that is the foundation of Islam and that integration. And the fact that you are feeding hundreds and hundreds of Muslims at iftar time, including non-Muslims, who are in need in, in El Dorado. And they're saying they're doing this so that they can actually unite the community mm. where Muslims, non-Muslims have for years been living together. Yes. And whatever petty differences that we've had, we set it aside, we can continue to grow and live. Absolutely, absolutely. And you know, uh, MJ, there's a beautiful verse in the Quran and it's something I believe, having seen these scenes and we're talking about our non-Muslim brothers and sisters wanting to assist us as Muslims. Mm. In this universe where there's always the first point of departure that we seek is religious differences mm. 
and we seek to so divide on the grounds of religion. Mm. There's such a beautiful verse where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about the non-Muslim, our non-Muslim brothers and sisters, Jews, Christians. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, minhumul mu'minun, that some of them are actually true believers. Mm. It's in the Quran, which means that even though they may be Christian, they may be Jew, they may hold a belief that is different to ours. Mm. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is still categorizing them within the ambit of Iman, mm. which is something to ponder about, is we often go down this route of saying, everybody that's not Muslim is mm. not believers, mm. and then there's something different to us. No, Allah is saying, some of them are actually true believers. Mm. Very true, mm. very true. Very good point being made. I believe our team ready in Cape Town standing by as we look at iftar preparations in the mother city. A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajeem Bismillah Rahman Rahim Assalamu Alaikum Wa Rahmatullahi Wa Barakatuh And welcome to Zamzam and Tamur And we are live at the, in Pal in Cape Town We I have with me um, um, Sheikh um, Zazir um, Zarir Zarir um, Assalamu Alaikum Sheikh How are you? Assalamu Alaikum Wa Rahmatullahi Wa Barakatuh Shadni How are you doing? I'm Alhamdulillah I can't complain It's been just a few minutes away just before we break our um, fast here in Cape Town mm. Tell me what is the experience like here in the Pal Masjid? Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, uh, Shadli, I've been now, I'm born in Paul, so I know the community, and I know the people, and we are a very close community. Uh, we have one Jama'ah, that's why we are known as Paul Muslim Jama'ah, we have one Jumu'ah, we have one Imam, we have one committee, and we have one Honorable Imam in Paul also with us there. So the Paul community is very close to one another, and in a community, uh, I think like in the old times they say Amal Ken for Amal So everyone knows everyone in Paul <laughs> And knows everyone's stories in Paul So uh, that, that, that uh, mahabba and love under the people Is something that you appreciate Especially for the times when I was uh, studying in Cairo You miss that, that warmth and love of the people uh, Of one community And that's the beauty about it obviously you know, Uniting everyone, uniting together um, Sheikh, also at the same time, you know, um, a bit about the history, you gave a bit about the history about the master iftar program, you yeah. know, during the month of Ramadan. We are just a few days away before we, we you know, we say farewell to the month of Ramadan. Yeah. How's the iftar program happening at this particular masjid? Uh, we have iftar every night uh, in the masjid and, and at the beginning, the first Jummah of the month of Ramadan, uh, we invited everyone because there's always a time in, in Ramadan that we hear uh, our reverts they feel that they are a bit out in the month of Ramadan. They don't have family members that they can go sit with and break their fast. So we have them, we invite them, we say you don't have to feel lonely. Come to the masjid, our foreign national brothers, we tell them come to the masjid. Oh, yeah. And it's so beautifully to see uh, rich, poor, foreigners, uh, reverts, everyone sitting together at that table waiting to break their fast, sharing a date with one another and teaching one another without you knowing the beautiful uh, models of Islam. They see, but this one is giving a date to that one. Why? And they ask questions, say, SubhanAllah, I'm breaking that one's fast and I get all that reward of that person without that person losing any reward. So all these things are happening. And, 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 and as I say, just that love to see under the people. It's something beautiful in Islam. And, and that is the beauty of Islam as well, you know, always sharing and caring for one another. Mm -hmm. Sheikh, also at the same time, can we speak about the, the, the Kirab program that's happening after, after um, the Tarweeh program? Obviously, Tarweeh is live on ITV tonight here at the Masjid al Nuria in Paul. Yes. Um, can you touch base on that for me a bit? The Kirab program, obviously, uh, just before we speak, we have our, our Mesh Iftar tonight. The 27th night of Ramadan, every year we invite the whole Paul community. So we have uh, our Masajid and we have Jamaat Khanas. So everyone come for the ending of the Khatam of the Quran to the Jamia Masjid. This Masjid, Masjid al Nur. And then all of us break our fast together in the basement. After that, uh, obviously the Qirat program, before the Qirat program starts, we have our Khatam of Quran. Where our Shuyukh will come in, the, our foreign Egyptian Shuyukh. And they will end of the Khatam with the Dua of Khatam al Quran. And when that program, when the Salat al is finished, then they will start with the Qira'at Qira program. They were here the last year, the first time when they came to Paul. And this year, Alhamdulillah, we have them again with a new Sheikh came with them, Sheikh Hindawi. So we, we are very excited to hear how the new one sound. 
But I heard in the older ones, there's also different tunes this time, inshallah. So we're excited having them here in Palma. And that, alhamdulillah, and that's the beauty about it. You know, it took, it took me about 45 minutes to get till here. So wherever you are around in Cape Town, please make your way to the, to the uh, Majdal Nur right here in the Pal area. Sheikh, can you perhaps just give the address to the viewers out there? It's 14 Lappet Street, Paul. So they can just put in the, what do you call this gadget that they have? <laughs> navigator. A navigator, just put in Lappet Street, Paul, inshallah, and we'll bring them here. But with all the iftar food around, you'll be able to smell it and come here, inshallah. <laughs> Join us, inshallah, and enjoy this last day, the last Saturday of Ramadan with us here in Paul, inshallah. Inshallah. Sheikh, we also, you know, on the last few days, um, just before we, like I said, we say farewell to the month, in the month, for the month of Ramadan. What is it, um, the experience like for you thus far? Subhanallah, Ramadan is a special month. And uh, I was just sitting earlier speaking to my wife at home and I told her, uh, there's things about Ramadan, obviously it's a spiritual month, but there's things that we have a custom in Cape Town that you will miss. The pujis, you miss it, you don't hear it other times of the year. Uh, the smelling of the food before iftar when the wife is busy, the mothers are busy, busy in the kitchen. You miss all those things. Uh, people sending cakes around to one another, sweet uh, things around to one another. All these things are leaving you. And if you think about it, you think to yourself, subhanallah, uh, only once a year. You get only once a year Ramadan, and all these beauty comes once a year with the month of Ramadan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from us. Just one message that I said, Jumu'ah to our people. A sheikh with the name of Sheikh uh, Ma'asrawi said these beautiful words. He said, don't search for the night of Laylatul Qadr uh, in the four pillars in the masjid. But search for the night of Laylatul Qadr with the satisfaction of your mother, the happiness of your father, the love of your brother and sister, the helping of a neighbor by helping someone that is in difficulty. Let us search for Laylatul Qadr because these things are going to be with us right through the year. As, as the saying says in Arabic, uh, man, uh, the person who has worshipped the month of Ramadan, فَإِنَّ Ramadan خَدْمَاتِ Ramadan will pass away. But the person who worship Allah, Allah will be there forever during the whole year, inshallah, and years to come, inshallah. Inshallah, alhamdulillah. And we obviously, um, just a few minutes away, just before we break our fast, right here in Cape Town. And with me, I have the Sheikh of the Masjid Nur, right here in the Pal area. Sheikh, you know, just a few minutes, few words to, um, you know, to, 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 to the viewers out there. Um, any specific thing that you'd like to say? I would love to tell the people, as I said, what the, uh, the Sheikh, Sheikh Masarawi said, uh, don't wait for the day of Eid uh, to put on that new clothes and now you get each other in the masjid and just say slama to one another and kiss one another and after that we don't worry with each other any, anymore. No, let this month of Ramadan be, as Allah mentioned to us at the beginning of the verse of Ramadan, ayyama ma'adu that it is a, it's a month with a specific amount of days. And Allah ended off and says, uh, uh, complete the number of days so that number of days is for us to bring a change in our life let the change be love and mercy and compassion to one another that we carry with right through the year inshallah inshallah sheikh and also tell me uh, you know uh, with regards to the to the um, iftar this evening um, what is the program happening for that yeah, Iftar, I first want to say shukran to all the cont contributors uh, because wallahi our people's hearts are open in this month of Ramadan. You just mention to them people need food and the food comes, it's also the blessings of the month of Ramadan. But we will have a break our fast now for Iftar in the, in, the, in the basement there. Then we will come up for Maghrib Salah and after Maghrib Salah everyone will go downstairs again and enjoy the nice biryani and everything that is down there. That will take us up to close to Aisha. We will come perform our Aisha Salah and our Traweer Salah, our Karat program, and then we will go down for more eating at the bottom, inshallah. So it's a celebration of food this last Saturday, the month of Ramadan, inshallah. <laughs> inshallah, alhamdulillah. And there you have it um, from myself, Shadi Skridu. We are live here in the Paul Masjid, Masjid Nuri in Paul in Cape Town. From myself, Shadi Skridu, we bid you wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. MashaAllah, Sheikh, uh, the Honorable Sheikh Zarir, graduate from Al Azhar University, a uh, beautiful masjid in Paul. Well, I've been in Paul a good couple of times, uh, about 50, 55 kilometers outside of the mother city. We've got plenty of Kung Fu students also in the Paul area. There's a lot of potential, lots of potential. Big masjid, um, a community also well established, uh, Alhamdulillah, and I'm sure at Iftar time now, Muhammad, there will 
definitely be dozens and dozens of, of, of people. But now, uh, in the closing passage, passages of day 26, Iftar has been taken in Durban, Johannesburg, Cape Town will do so probably in the next two, three minutes. Uh, we spoke earlier about Laylatul Qadr, the night of power. You made reference to that honor of completing the Hatam of Quran, but that the, 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 the spiritual power and that essence mm. of the Qur'an that you tend to feel uh, yes. upon completion, it makes us realize that, yes, Allah has blessed us with that responsibility mm. of being vicegerents yes. and being, you mentioned it before on the show, benefactors, yes. not just to Muslims, but to, to mankind. Yes. We need to be of service to humanity. Mm. That should be one of our uh, dua and yes. prayers tonight in Absolutely. Laylatul Qadr, that the Almighty blesses us with that understanding mm. of what a benefactor is really like and what we should be doing for mankind. Absolutely, and the most noblest of examples that we can ever portray or try and emulate is that of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, لَقَدَ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنًا The most beautiful, perfect example is in Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And when they asked Sahaba Ikram as Bibi Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, describe him to us. Describe Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to us. They, you know, imagine what a beautiful scene. You know, they all love him. They are his companions. They come to his wife. Hmm. Say, you as his wife, tell us about him. We want to fall in love with him even yes. more. Hmm. And she responds and says, he's the walking Quran. Hmm. You know, what a description Bibi Aisha gave that Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to me as his wife, he's the walking Quran. And if we were to emulate Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his description is that he is the walking Qur'an, that means we need to know what is in the Qur'an. How will we ever be proper benefactors of humanity? How will we ever be able to emulate Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam truly if we don't know what is in this beautiful, beautiful word of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala? Makes really uh, one thinking as Muhammad speaks, we're actually getting goosebumps. Now think of those last couple of nights. Iftar time has just arrived for our viewers in Cape Town. Day 26 has been concluded. Sadly, never to return again. We pray that the Almighty allows us to see through the month of Ramadan, the balance of the days, and that He blesses us with acceptance of whatever good we've done. Importantly, let's ask Allah to uh, His assistance, His guidance, uh, and His acceptance for us to experience Ramadan 1441. Because now at this point, Rabbi Muhammad, we may feel, I don't think I've really put in enough. No. Um, although we still have a few mm. days, all is not, not lost. What, what is our concluding uh, message to our viewers? We have tonight possibly to be Laylatul Qadr. We ask all our viewers, inshallah, remember me first and foremost, my family, all of us, the Ummah of Nabi Wasallam, and the broader humanity, our brothers and sisters of all faiths. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remove all our difficulties, inshallah. Never fear of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it will always, always, always overpower his anger. And it is infinite and unending. So beseech him. Let us beseech him tonight. Let, he, let us seek his forgiveness. And inshallah, it may be Laylatul Qadr tonight. Maybe this will be our means of emancipation for eternity, inshallah. Inshallah. Muhammad Amin Hassan, head of Sharia Banking, a Standard Bank. Jazakallah so much. Thank Afwan. you very much. Yeah. So that concludes day 26 uh, for us uh, in terms of Ramadan. Also our 26th episode as we live daily across uh, South Africa and the African continent, ITV Network, Zamzam and Tamur. We've been in your company for 26 days and tonight we have an opportunity to once again be in search of the night of Laylatul Qadr, the night of power. Let's make the most of it. No Netflix, no screen time. No social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat. Um, let's forget about the highlights of the Cricket World Cup. We can get to that after Ramadan because it's just a couple of days, inshallah. We can get to it again. South Africa will have to bounce back against Bangladesh very, very soon because I believe they are playing India yeah. on, on Eid Day, on Eid Day, if it is on, on Wednesday, inshallah. So we trust and pray, inshallah, that you will have a spiritually uplifting uh, evening tonight as we go in search of the night of power. My name is MJ Lee. Inshallah, we'll be back in your company tomorrow at quarter past four. Zamzam and Tamur broadcasting live on ITV Networks 347 in South Africa and across the African continent. We cross live to Makkah.
رمضان بحياتي شمع على مماتي يا ربي دعاتي تقبلها عطول رمضان ده رحمة من ربنا النعمة رمضان بحياتي شمع على مماتي يا ربي دعاتي تقبلها عطول رمضان ده رحمة من ربنا النعمة بيحل حياتي